Hey there and welcome to... What the hell was that? Oh, this is a list that's gonna freak me out, isn't it? Okay, good luck everyone. I'm Sean Ferrick for What Culture Horror and here are 10 more disturbing things found in the background of horror movies. Number 10, Cyrus in the Shadows, 13 Ghosts. 13 Ghosts begins with ghost hunter Cyrus Criticus, F. Murray Abraham, apparently being killed while attempting to catch a ghost. However, deep into the third act, it's revealed that Cyrus actually faked his death in order to lure his nephew Arthur, played by Tony Shalhoub, to the haunted house. Yet, about 10 minutes before Cyrus emerges from the shadows, you can briefly see him loitering around in the shadows. When Arthur learns that the spirit of his dead wife is sealed within the house, he punches the man responsible, Dennis Rafkin, Matthew Lillard, square in the face. As Arthur falls to the floor post-punch, keep an eye on the black void between the wall and the shelf behind him, as Cyrus is just barely visible watching the scene unfolding from the dark. It's much easier to spot if you boost the brightness on your display, but even then you might need to squint to notice that it's F. Murray Abraham peeking in on the action. That's creepy as hell. Number 9. Blair's Noose the Thing 1982. John Carpenter's sci-fi horror masterpiece The Thing has a bevy of background details both awesome and mortifying and here's one that's often ignored. After biologist Blair, played by Wilfred Brimley, grows dangerously paranoid and attempts to destroy any means of escape from the Antarctic research base, the rest of the group locks him inside the tool shed. Later McCready, played by Kurt Russell, goes to check on Blair who asks to be released from the shed insisting that he's calmed down and back to normal now. McCready ultimately refuses in case Blair is infected, and there's a dead giveaway in the back of the frame right next to Blair that is absolutely confirming this is the right decision. Note the noose that's hanging right by Blair, which suggests that, at some point, Blair prepared to hang himself to give the thing one less person to inhabit. However, the creature ultimately assimilated him before he could go through with it, leaving the noose hanging there for all to see. It's incredibly easy to take the noose for granted, and yet it's a fantastic sliver of grim visual storytelling. Number 8. Toshio in the Reflection, Juon, The Grudge. Near the end of the original Japanese version of The Grudge, protagonist Rika, Megumi Okina, is seen caring for a pervy man suffering from dementia, Mr. Saito, Isao Yatsu. The man seemingly plays peekaboo with himself while Rika wheels him round, admittedly a not particularly abnormal act for someone beset by mental deterioration. And yet, for a few fractions of a second when the door to the hospital is being opened by an orderly, the ghost of young Toshio, Yuya Ozeki, can be spotted in the door's reflection, standing right beside Saito and Rika. As it turns out, Mr. Saito wasn't entirely out of his mind, at least not in this moment. He was playing peekaboo with Toshio. Reflections are such a simple yet brilliant way for filmmakers to hide creepy surprises and details in plain sight, so it's honestly surprising we don't see more creative uses like this. Number 7. La Femme Walks Through the House Inside. 2007's French horror film Inside is one of the most savagely unforgiving horrors of the last 20 years, revolving around a pregnant woman, Sarah, played by Alison Paradis, who is terrorised by a strange woman, Beatrice Dahl, in her home. After her first encounter with the woman, an understandably petrified Sarah calls the police, who arrive to inspect the house. As one of the officers is talking to Sarah though, keep your eyes on the left hand side of the frame. For a few brief moments the woman can be seen quietly re-entering the house and yet, given that the filmmakers have centred the frame on Sarah and the police officer, most viewers won't notice the woman slightly slinking back into the property. Even for a blatant maniac with a faint grasp on reality at best, that's ballsy. Number 6. Madison's Face. What Lies Beneath. In the case of what lies beneath's deeply creepy final shot, the disturbing detail isn't hidden in the back of the frame so much as it's concealed within the shot's darkness threshold. That is to say, turn your brightness way up to spot this one. The final scene sees Claire, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, visit the snow-topped grave of Madison Elizabeth Frank, Amber Valletta, a young woman who was murdered by Claire's now dead husband, Dr. Norman Spencer, played by Harrison Ford. As Claire walks away and the image fades to black, signalling the end credits roll, hit the pause button and crank your brightness up as high as possible. In the bottom middle of the screen, a strange optical effect is visual. The shadowy shape of Madison's eyes and the bridge of her nose in the snow, having evidently been surreptitiously layered there by director Robert Zemeckis. The irony of subtly layering this visual beneath the focal image in a film called What Lies Beneath shouldn't be ignored either. Number 5. 
the killer's reflection, Mindhunters. Rennie Harlan's 2004 slasher film Mindhunters revolves around a group of trainee FBI profilers who must attempt to figure out the identity of the killer in their midst before it's too late. In the third act, the trainees come to believe that the killer must be the man who set the training exercise up, FBI agent Jake Harris, played by Val Kilmer, after he seemingly plays a taunting message over the control room's PA system. But when the remaining characters break into the room, they find Harris brutally murdered and the true source of the message, a video of Harris being tortured by the real killer. Harris was actually taunting the killer, who then murders Harris just as the video cuts off. But if you look at this static filled video screen over Harris's left shoulder on the recording, it's actually possible to deduce the killer's identity. In the reflection of the TV, their faint silhouette can be made out. And gee, of all the characters still standing in the movie, doesn't the outline look a lot like Lucas Harper, Johnny Lee Miller's character. Lo and behold, anyone who spots this eerie detail probably isn't too surprised when Lucas indeed reveals himself to be the true murderous mastermind about 15 minutes later. Harlan does at least try to make observant viewers doubt themselves though, by giving Lucas a fake out death in the meantime, when he's shot by a paranoid Gabe, played by LL Cool J, but subsequently revealed to have been wearing a bulletproof vest. Sneaky. Number four, the original map, Blair Witch 2016. Now, in the case of 20 2016's Blair Witch sequel, you'll only spot this unnerving background detail if your eyesight is really damn good. Deep into the movie's third act, Lisa, played by Cali Hernandez, heads upstairs in serial killer Rustin Parr's house, and for less than a second, an object can be seen on the floor which should certainly be at least a little familiar to fans of the franchise. Again, it's far from the easiest thing to spot, but the soggy, papery mass in the corner of the hall is the map from the original Blair Witch Project which Mike, Michael Williams, infamously kicked into the creek in annoyance when he got lost. The map isn't ever found in the original film, but the sequel confirms that it somehow ended up in Rustin Parr's decrepit abode nearby. However, this detail was entirely missed upon the film's theatrical release, with even director Adam Wingard and writer Simon Barrett offering $200 to whoever first spotted it. They eventually doubled the pot to $400 though, and a few weeks after the film hit streaming, one fan finally made the discovery. Number three, The Creatures, Devil's Pass. Rennie Harlan strikes again, this time with his 2013 found footage film, Devil's Pass. The movie revolves around a group of American student filmmakers investigating the infamous Dyatlov Pass incident, an unexplained event in 1959 in which nine Soviet hikers mysteriously died in the Ural Mountains. The film's kooky alt-history hypothesis posits that the hikers were attacked and killed by mutant humanoid creatures, and roughly one third of the way through the movie, these monsters make a sneaky appearance in in the background. When co-director Jensen, Matt Stoko, is having a heart-to-heart -heart with fellow director Holly, Holly Goss, keep your eyes trained on the snowy hills behind them, and for a number of seconds, two of the creatures can be seen crawling and running around. They're incredibly easily missed amid the icy bluster, and yet are sure to terrify the bejesus out of anyone who actually manages to spot them. So well done if you indeed caught them. Number two, camouflaged alien hand signs. We all know that M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense is cram-packed full of fascinating visual details, but not enough is said about his terrific 2002 sci-fi horror signs. Later in the film, the Hess family barricades themselves in their basement as the global alien invasion begins, leading to one of the most terrifying scares in the entire movie. As Graham, Mel Gibson's character, and his brother Merrill, played by Joaquin Phoenix, look around the room, they find Graham's son Morgan, played by a young Rory Culkin, standing by a metal grate. Graham and Merrill stare at Morgan and, after a beat, he asks them what? Just before an alien's hand moves from the grate, having used its camouflage abilities to blend in with the grate. It's a brilliant scare and a classic example of hiding something deeply terrifying in plain sight. Audiences have got a few seconds to note the camouflaged alien hand before it moves, but on an initial viewing at least, almost nobody will. Number one, Austin Powers' penis enlarger, Scary Movie 2. And to end our list on something of a lighter, albeit no less unsettling note, we have a toe-curdingly icky visual gag from almighty horror comedy, Scary Movie 2. When Professor Oldman's, Tim Curry, assistant Dwight, played by David Cross, is hanging out in Hell House's control room, 
the cabinet behind him contains a most bizarre and, frankly, horrifying object on the top shelf. Fans of the Austin Powers franchise might find the series of tubes strangely familiar looking. Of course, they're from Austin's penis enlarger pump in the first movie. And if you're not yet convinced that this is anything but a mere coincidence, remember that the penis enlarger is said to be Swedish in Austin Powers. And what can be seen in the cabinet alongside the pump in Scary Movie 2? Why, it's a Swedish flag, of course. Evidently, somebody working on the Scary Movie 2 set was a big fan of Austin Powers and decided to pay tribute to it in the most hilariously weird and unexpectedly off-putting way. And with that, our list comes to a close. Thank you so much for watching along. You are awesome. You are wonderful, of course. Thank you very much to Jack Pooley for writing the original list upon which this video is based. Look after yourself and remember, keep your eyes peeled, look around you and try and look for the funny things as opposed to that thing right behind you. Thanks very much.